Gallimera, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. And what a very hot morning you join us on today. Uh, clear blue skies. A uh, quick message from the lovely Amanda with a concise weather forecast. She says, morning, Ginge. Uh, Sunday's weather, yellow warning. Yellow warning uh, for extremely high temperatures, sunny and very hot. Temperatures uh, 34 degrees, but will feel like 37. Have a great day. She also, also as well, the week long heat wave is expected to peak as well uh, throughout the country with meteorologists forecasting temperatures of up to 43 degrees Celsius. Anyway, uh, temperatures in Attica and Athens are going to range between 28 to 40. I do happen to know that when I was looking on my bike the other day, uh, again, it was showing 40. Just uh, quickly, uh, if people don't realise, uh, when they give you a temperature for a day, that's normally what they reckon the average will be. So when they say it's going to be something like uh, 34, it's probably going to be a lot higher than 34. But to be honest, yesterday, I do know it was like 40 on my bike. Uh, that's one of the reasons I didn't go out yesterday afternoon. I just stayed in the house. It was just too hot to go anywhere. Anyway, uh, let's have a quick look at uh, what we're expecting today in arrivals here on Zakynthos. Um, just before I do that, just to let you know, for all those people following uh, Wiggy Win Stanley at the moment, the ambassador for Wigan in Limassol, Cyprus, a uh, good Rapperedge gunner friend of mine, uh, I just spoke to his wife within the last few minutes. Um, he's still in the ICU at the moment. He's still in and out of consciousness. Um, she is working, obviously, where she is. She goes to visit him uh, when she can from work. Uh, but at the moment, she thanks everybody for all their well wishes and their, their good words and that for Wiggy. Um, hopefully, uh, Wiggy will make a, a, a recovery. But anyway, everybody's root rooting for you, mate. And uh, once again, uh, um, your wife is uh, doing what she can, bless her. And again, thank you to Derek Cole and also uh, Dennis Patrick Carroll over in uh, Limassol who again are also assisting as well and helping Wiggy on his way. Anyway, um, just have a look at the arrivals today. Um, it's quite a busy day at the airport today. Uh, we've got three flights in from Germany. Uh, we've got two in from Amsterdam. We've got one flight in from Denmark, uh, which is uh, a little surprise. Uh, we have three flights in from Poland. Uh, we have one flight in from Israel. Uh, we have one flight in from Italy, uh, one flight in from Lithuania, uh, one flight in from Austria, and uh, one flight in from Athens as well. So it looks like quite a busy day at the airport. Jane was down there yesterday evening uh, meeting flights uh, for EasyJet. And um, again, it uh, seemed to be quiet at the airport, J Jane said, uh, not throngs of people uh, as uh, what we would have in a normal season. But anyway, uh, those flights, at least we know the Bristol flight came in and the British Airways flight came in. But the other British flight, we're not sure whether that actually arrived or not. Anyway, um, as for COVID in the last 24 hours, that thankfully is on a downward um, glide. Uh, 375 new infections reported across the country. That was down from 395 on the previous day. Um, four new cases were identified after checks into the country. That unfortunately is up on the zero from the previous day. And now according to the national stats at the moment, there were two cases in Corfu, um, no cases in Kefalonia. And interestingly, we had one case reported here in Zakynthos on the national stats. Even though we've had one case reported, uh, we've also been informed by the president of the Association of Hospital Workers uh, that the ICU COVID clinic here in Zakynthos is actually empty. All right. There's no patients in either in the ICU or in the uh, COVID ward. That is completely empty. So that is obviously a good sign. Uh, so that means at the moment for the month of June, Zakynthos has had seven cases uh, of COVID on the island since then. Uh, when you consider that last month in May, we had 44. And then in April, we had 177. And in March, we had 184. In February, we had 70. And in January, we had 30. Obviously, you can see it's been a downward um, uh, spiral, so which is good, which is what we wanted to keep it. 
Um, as for new debts, interestingly, that has dropped, and that's been quite a drop, actually, across Greece. Uh, reported to you 21 yesterday. Today, 12 new debts reported across the uh, country. That brings the death total now up to 12,646. Again, 96% uh, of those people had underlying health problems or were over the age of 70. Um, when it comes to the ICUs, um, ICU numbers are down across the country, uh, not by much. Uh, 239 was what I said to you yesterday. Well, that's dropped down to 238. However, when you look at the male to female ratio, I can't see where we've lost those people. But anyway, at the moment, uh, we have 153 uh, uh, males in uh, ICUs across the country and 85 uh, females. And once again, just to remind you that the maximum amount of beds that Greece has for ICU treatment is 900. So obviously that means the pressure on the uh, Greek health system is way down. And when you think uh, Zakynthos now has no one in its COVID clinic at all at the moment, uh, obviously the numbers are way down as well. Right, today's news, I've got to be honest, today's uh, first story is a very sad story. A 64-year-old Englishman living in Zakynthos uh, took his life yesterday. Uh, the man was found by another Englishwoman who was passing by. Um, the Briton did leave a letter explaining the reasons that led to his suicide, and uh, he was also dressed in a suit as well. Now, the 64-year-old man was renting a house uh, where he had a caravan stored, and uh, he hung himself from a tree. An autopsy on the body of the 64-year-old will take place next Monday, uh, which is June the 28th. Uh, police are investigating what could have pushed the 63-year-old uh, to this action. Now, there has been condemnation on social media sites across here in Zakynthos about the handling of the reporting by certain uh, uh, areas and the insensitivity of uh, pictures. And I do know at the moment that a letter has been sent to the mayor expressing uh, the dissatisfaction of the way that the reporting has been handled. And so we'll wait and see uh, what the fallout is from that. But once again, my condolences uh, to the family who have lost somebody at this point. I'm not going to get into speculation as to who it is, but again, at the end of the day, there are people who are suffering very, very badly through COVID, through what's happening economically, what's going on, and even just the way that life is uh, dealing them a bad hand. So once again, uh, my condolences to the family. I hope that uh, closure will be forthcoming. And again, if anybody feels themselves in this position where they can't see any way out, please, please, please talk to somebody. I'm not sure if we have some kind of Samaritans here in Zakynthos in the same way as you would have in any other country, uh, but please talk to somebody, get somebody to speak to you. Things may not be as black as what you might think they are, and there may be some way out to whatever situation you find yourself in. So once again, our condolences to the family. Um, <clears throat> During the last uh, 48 hours in Corfu and Zakynthos, uh, four people were arrested by police officers of their respective police uh, directorates on the islands for drug possession. Uh, on Friday in the evening, uh, by police officers of uh, Central and North, Kof North Corfu, uh, in two different cases, they arrested a local and a foreigner. Uh, the first was for possession of a small amount of raw hemp and the second was uh, for small quantities of raw hemp and also crystal meth. Uh, in another uh, case uh, 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 last night in South Corfu, a local was also arrested by police uh, as well for being in possession of raw cannabis. Uh, in addition, in Lagana, Zakynthos, in the early hours of Saturday morning, police officers arrested a foreigner who was located and arrested for possession of a small amount of raw cannabis. All of those who have been arrested have been taken before uh, their relevant uh, prosecuting authorities. So again, we'll keep an eye on those stories. Uh, the last thing we want is uh, drugs also getting into the picture, uh, which doesn't help our season. Anyway, the, the Greek government is going to make announcements on Monday about the benefits and privileges of uh, those uh, who complete their vaccination uh, programs. Now, the development minister, uh, Adios Giardardis, said this on Saturday. He said it's uh, I, I, this double talk. All right. 
He said, it is not a question of privileges. It is a question of logic. When you decide not to get vaccinated, you are more at risk. If you decide not to be vaccinated, we must take measures that will protect you from your choice. That sounds very draconian. He also told the Mega Channel, that's a TV station here in Greece, that these measures will concern indoor areas. Anyway, the government wants to uh, propose these benefits as incentives for more people uh, to get vaccinated. So one minute you're saying they're not privileges, then you're saying that they're incentives. Listen, you just want us to get vaccinated. You've got this massive store of vaccine that you've gone and bought, you've gone and paid for, and you don't want to throw it away. You just want to make sure that people get vaccinated. And again, it's your choice, your decision, whether you have the vaccination or not. I've never for once said don't have it. I leave that uh, de decision up to you to make your choice. I've made my choice. You're going to obviously make life difficult for me uh, and I will live with the consequences and, and I will wait and see how it all plays out. Anyway, he said as well, any measures will be debated over the summer and the final decision will eventually be implemented in the autumn when people return indoors. So at the moment, it looks like uh, for the summer season, at least, um, we shall uh, uh, test self-test if I have to every day or whatever time they want once a week. But at the moment, I still don't personally want the vaccine. All right. Anyway. Expectations of a smooth July in Greek tourism in the Greek tourism sector are giving way to fear uh, due to growing concerns about the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Now, the extension of restrictive measures on British travel to Greece and the reluctance of Berlin and Paris to accept the adoption of the digital certificate as of the 1st of July, as Athens thought it was, has been of great concern to the country. Now, both uh, the German Chancellor Angelina Merkel and the French President Emmanuel Macron have expressed concern that Greece and other European Union countries are allowing entry of travellers who have been inoculated with Russian and Chinese vaccines that have not been approved by the EU. Now, in general, the Europeans' uh, political tug of war with Britain, I like that. That's a nice uh, phraseology, tug of war. Uh, what we're talking about is Brexit there, basically. And even more so with Russia has indicated that this summer won't be much better than last year in terms of foreign tourists' arrival, as many had expected just a few days ago. Now, this is especially disconcerting for entrepreneurs in the industry in those Greek destinations that depend on the UK and the Russian markets. Well, I would say we depend on the UK market 100%. Uh, shall we say the Russian market for us is maybe a little bit of cream on the cake, but I wouldn't hold up great hopes with the Russian market. It certainly didn't do us much favours last time uh, before all the sanctions were put against them uh, a few years ago with the annexation of Crimea. Anyway, <clears throat> the concerns were accentuated by the development in, in the previous 48 hours. Uh, First London presented a revised list of destinations that British tourists can visit without having to be quarantined on their return, which, however, does not include Greece or its individual island destinations as they had hoped. What they're saying there is that Greece had not gone onto the green list, had hoped. We are still in the amber list. However, it looks like you can still come here but you don't need to quarantine when you go back. It's a kind of a vagary that, again, people just want more. Either we're in green or we're not in green or we're in amber. And uh, even though we're in amber, it looks like you don't have to quarantine if you've had the vaccine. All right. That's basically the bottom line of it. It's, again, this wishy-washy uh, language, which I think is designed to be fought out in a court if something goes wrong. It can be used to, as a bit of legal ease, shall we say, to uh, win or lose a case in the high courts if somebody wants to go that far. However, uh, the UK Transport Minister Grant Schnapp said that late in summer, uh, fully vaccinated British residents will not have to isolate when returning from amber countries, as I've already just explained. Moreover, instead of a decision on the implementation of the digital vaccination certificate from the 1st of July, the European Council stated in its conclusion this week that the agreement reached on the EU COVID digital certificate and the revision 
of the two council recommendations on travel within the EU and unnecessary travel to the EU will facilitate safe cross-border travel. Uh, again, this jargon, this kind of uh, say one thing over here, another thing happens over there. Clarity not coming through. And it makes me laugh. In the last bit, it says, but it clarified that member states will implement them in such a way as to ensure a full return to free movement as soon as the state public health allows it. Anyway, a day earlier, Merkel said that at Brussels summit that a member state such as Greece welcome travellers vaccinated with the Sputnik V, that's the Russian uh, um, um, uh, 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 vaccine against COVID-19, even though the vaccine has not received European approval and it is not clear how effective it is against new dangerous strains of the virus. Uh, these travellers can then move freely within the EU, she said, according to Bloomberg. Merkel's position were also reportedly shared by Macron. So again, the Germans and the French sticking together, uh, basically saying, well, you know what? Um, no, you're not coming. And even if we do present a, a digital passport, we're not going to recognise it. Uh, and we're certainly not going to recognise it if you've had the Sputnik V injection or a Chinese variant of the vaccine. Not to say that I would not trust those two uh, vaccines anyway, but you've also got to look at it from Greece's point of view. It's sold out to the Chinese in the way of doing business with the Korea's port, so it is not going to affect its relations with China. Greece is doing a lot of work with China. But on the other token, with Russia, despite all the sabre rattling that's going on in the uh, in, in, in the Western Mediterranean with Turkey and everything else, and also Russia's involvement with uh, what's going on with the oil exploration, and also the extra pressure that Turkey is putting on Greece in the way of uh, little uh, incidents going on along that border, you've also got to feel... Why does Greece still want to be dealing with uh, with Russia at the end of the day? And again, I think this is a global issue at the end of the day. It is also uh, Greece trying to play everybody else off against each other. Uh, and again, I don't see the Russian. And again, Putin's also been accused of using its tourism market as a part of political gain over other countries. If you play ball by us, we'll send you our tourists. He's doing this with Turkey at the moment. Turkey's got the highest rate of, uh, of epidemiology at the moment. Also, interestingly, Turkey's on the red list as well. And yet Russia is happy to send its people there, technically into an area of high infection. And I know there are a tough old rustic people, the Russians, but to be honest, you're using your own population as political pawns uh, in the bigger uh, realm of uh, doing deals and trading with the people that are running the country. And I do feel there's a bit of this now coming into play. There's a lot of this ramping up the language, the Delta variant, the Delta variant. And can I also say congratulations to all those people yesterday who took part in the massive protest yesterday in London. Didn't get much of a uh, press coverage in the mainstream media in the UK. Certainly didn't see the BBC covering it as well. Um, I did. Can I just say thank you to uh, uh, Yanis Savis, a uh, friend of mine, works for the BBC. Uh, he sent me pictures yesterday of the protest that was going on outside his home, of the people involved. And uh, basically, um, thank you for that, fella. But again, hats off to all those people who took part in those protests and also they're probably going to be smeared as uh, conspiracy theorists and everything else uh anti-vaxxers anti uh pro brexiters all the other bullshit that will be landed on it because they are not conforming to what the government wants at the moment i was pleased to see that your man uh matt hancock has eventually seen sense and resigned after his debacle of what's gone on although i must admit i'm not holding up much hope for the new guy that's going to take over i'm just trying to remember what his name is uh but again it is just this plain politics at the moment uh, and people have done what's been asked of them. They've had the vaccine. They've stayed locked down. They've watched their business being run into the ground. Uh, some people have done very nicely out of this. Uh, they've been furloughed for the last God knows how many months, getting 80% of their pay. But the reality is this. Those days are running out for those people. 
the government is making it very clear they're not going to bail you out anymore and you're going to have to make a decision to go back to work because at the end of the day congratulations to sweden who i think from the moment it started handled it in the correct way you can't close down an economy for another variation of flu and uh, when you look at the amount of deaths at the moment i think what was it 24 deaths they had yesterday in britain for covid yet there was more people dying of flu more people dying of cancer more people dying of heart attacks than they were of the covid but still covid is at the front there oh 24 deaths all oh, quaking your boots quaking your shoes and uh, uh, and those people out on the streets yesterday just basically said we've had enough we want to take our country back we want to get some resemblance of normality we want to go on holiday we want to go where we want to go and uh, what's more we want to stop our money our taxpayers money funding some of the madness that's been going on the track and trace which the government don't even talk about anymore how many billions did that cost plus all the cronyism all the backdoor deals done with ppe and all the other stuff uh, for people all on your money and all oh, and the government is going to have to go out and borrow some more uh, to make up the shortfall and of course you know what's going to happen the health service and all of the other stuff is going to get attacked, uh, is going to get basically run down because the money has gone on to other things. And another little point, somebody did remind me as well, the Nightingale hospitals, what a waste of money they were. And were they used? No. I think 30 patients in the one in London at the O2, um, and that was it, through the height of everything, the NHS still managed to cope uh, treating people and 30 people went in the uh, in the in the in the uh, Nightingale and they could probably could have gone in somewhere in London. But we had to put somebody in there to justify the cost of it. And again, who's paid for that? British taxpayers paid for that. But anyway, that's by the by. Uh, going on to another story again in the face of criticism uh, received by Greece from germany and france over its uh, lax entry policy for arrivals from non-european countries where the new delta variant is proliferating they're talking about the uk uh, prime minister uh, mr takis noted on friday that the assessment of experts is that by the end of august this mutation will predominantly uh, will be the predominant one across Europe. And the answer to this is to speed up vaccinations. So, yeah, he's getting it in the neck from the French and the Germans. But he says more vaccinations, more vaccinations uh, will keep it at bay as far as he's concerned. Because at the end of the day, he still wants to keep his economy turning and burning. And he wants, and he understands that uh, tourism is, is, is money at the end of the day he said uh, my personal assessment which i believe is shared by the majority of the european council is there is no need to impose additional restrictions on travel from countries where this uh, mutation already exists and its spread is more pronounced he told journalists at the end of the eu summit uh, there is an answer to the question of variants and in particular to the Delta variants and that is to speed up the vacu evacuation process. Anyway, referring to reports in the Greece of criticism by Chancellor Angela Merkel over the acceptance of the Sputnik V vaccine, Mitsotakis dismissed them as uh, journalistic exaggerations. <laughs> I like that. Uh, he nonetheless admitted that the issue was raised. At the same time, he insisted that there is by no means a majority in the European Council that wants to impose additional restrictions in the view of the summer to deal with the Delta variant, neither in third countries nor within the Union. So basically what he's saying, this could actually be all a storm in a teacup. He knows that there's other countries in the EU who want the British and other people to come. All right. Spain is one of them for sure. OK, and again, they're having to stay on side with uh, Merkel simply because they're still going to have to go to her if they need bailout and they need financial assistan assistance at the end of the day. Anyway, Mitsotakis also stated that the summit conclusions fully satisfy the Greek position on Turkey within regards to cooperation with Ankara on refugees. Uh, Mitsotakis said that this will be done on uh, two basic conditions. Firstly, that they are not weaponized for political purposes. 
and secondly on Turkish goodwill, uh, including accepting the return of 1,450 migrants currently on the Greek islands and an app which uh, who actually had an application whose applications had been rejected. So uh, basically, that was another side issue that he was talking about is the handling of refugees here uh, in Greece at the moment, and also returning about 1,450 migrants back to uh, Turkey who had obviously failed uh, the um, the uh, qualification to be allowed into Europe itself for whatever reason that might have been. Anyway, and finally, I found an absolutely fascinating story uh, today about a guy called uh, Costa Saradis. Now, he was a Greek fighter uh, who escaped from a Nazi labor camp during the Second World War to become a national hero in Vietnam. Well, he passed away on June the 25th in Athens. He was 94 years of age. And what a fantastically interesting life this man had. Now, he was the sole foreigner uh, who was honored with the title Hero of the People's Armed Forces of Vietnam. The Vietnamese ambassador to Greece, uh, Vu Pin, uh, said uh, Costa Saradakis, uh, life is tied with the heroic uh, moments of the Vietnamese people. Now, his story is, is absolutely fascinating now he was born in 1927 that was two years before me dad uh, in Thessaloniki now he's actually an Asian minor refugee all right now in the autumn of 1943 during the uh, Nazi occupation of Greece uh, obviously during World War II he was arrested uh, for smuggling tobacco and was sent on foot to a Nazi force labor camp in Germany Anyway, he managed to escape near Vienna uh, by stealing a military uniform, which he then used as a, used to disguise himself as a German right up until the end of the war. Anyway, after the end of the war, uh, Saratanas uh, went to Rome and tried to be repatriated to Greece. Now, this, however, proved impossible at the time because he lacked any identification documents and without any means of supporting himself, uh, Saratas was lured into the French Foreign Legion. Big shout out to my old mate, Mr. Chukta, over there. Uh, he was uh, lured into the French Foreign Legion by the prospect of living an adventurous life and uh, meeting beautiful women, bless. Anyway, he said after joining the Legion, uh, Saradas was initially moved to Algeria and landed in Indochina in 1946. Now, while he was there, he and other Legionnaires were told that uh, the duration of their deployment, which would be short, and their mission would be to disarm the Japanese and to restore order. Anyway, it seems Saradas disliked the oppression of the local population by the French colonial troops. After two months with the Legion, he contacted Viet Minh spies and defected to them, uh, taking with him his rifle and his machine gun. Anyway, he was given the name uh, Naro Van Lap, I think that's how you pronounce that, and he served in various posts, participating in many battles. Eventually, he rose to the rank of captain in 1949, and he was admitted to the Communist Party of Vietnam. Now, after the end of the war in 1954 and the division of Vietnam into northern and southern zones, Saradas moved to North Vietnam and retired from the army. At that time, he was married to a nurse who was accused of reactionism and was then imprisoned. You must remember at that time in North, uh, in North Vietnam, uh, there was a lot of atrocities committed uh, when they tried to get rid of the middle classes. Anyway, uh, Saradis worked as a German translator, which is interesting. Oh, obviously picking up the language while he was uh, hiding as a German soldier over there in Austria. Uh, he worked as a German translator and then later as a miner. Uh, he also remarried to a Vietnamese woman with whom he had three children. Now, from the day he was arrested in Thessaloniki until the early 50s, Saradas had not communicated with his family, who presumed, who he presumed was all dead. And near the end of the war, he started to exchange letters with them. And in 1965, he decided then uh, to return to Greece. Now, with the aid of one of his brothers who helped him, uh, Saradis' uh, family to issue passports, <coughs> 
He then obviously moved to Thessaloniki. Now, while in Greece, uh, Saridis joined the Greek Communist Party and worked uh, for helping, uh, helping uh, Vietnamese uh, as well as promoting uh, as well as promoting Greek uh, Vietnamese relations. Saridis had also been active in helping children in Vietnam who'd been affected by the Agent Orange campaign. That was when the Americans were spraying the jungles uh, with this very, very deadly agent. The idea was to defoliate the areas around bases so that obviously um, uh, 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 they would see the Vietnamese cut of the Viet Cong coming. But unfortunately, the side effect was it contaminated water sources, contaminated soup, food sources. Even to this day, there's areas in Vietnam that are still affected by Agent Orange. Anyway, in 2010, Saradis was given the uh, Vietnamese citizenship and a passport. In 2013, he was named a hero of the people of the armed forces. Additionally, he had been awarded several honorary titles by both the Vietnamese party and state, including Friendship Order in 2011, the Victory Medal Third Class, and the Resistance War Medal, uh, second class. So there you go. Well done. Rest in peace, fella. Sounded like you had an amazing life, a very, very amazing life. Right, let's have a quick look and see who's tuning in. The old Raf Reg buddy up there in uh, the north part of the Peloponnese is tuning in. Paul, nice to see you looking in, fella. How are you doing? Uh, John Clifford, who's here on Zakin, says, Morning, Colin. Another sizzler today. It certainly is, so make sure you've got plenty of water. Get some of that sunscreen on you. I don't know about you. Yesterday, I was going to go out yesterday, but it was just too hot to go out, and I just stayed in yesterday. And uh, Can I just say commiserations for Wales yesterday. Um, what a game. Absolute game. You fought like dragons. That's the best way to describe you. Uh, you I so wish that you'd won your game yesterday. Uh, Denmark, <laughs> the Vikings, uh, they, I wouldn't say they trounced you. They had a hard fight to get their two goals, but I think you can hold your heads high. Wales, I thought you did a fantastic effort yesterday. Uh, also as well, big shout out to Austria. I saw you got beaten by Italy yesterday. I'm not sure how your game went. So again, commiserations to Italy as well uh, on the uh, Euro Still got to see how England's going to do on Tuesday, all right? Uh, Julie Hammond is watching as well. Alan Park says, good morning, Ginge, and looking in. Cheers, my man. Nice to have you looking in. Uh, Dennis Patrick Carroll from uh, Cyprus is tuning in as well. Nice to have you looking in as well, fella. Thanks for keeping me aware of what's happening with Wiggy. I do appreciate that. Steve Hinkling up there in Stoke-on-Trent is also tuning in. I'm not sure what the weather's like where you are in Stoke today. Uh, Brian Slinger also says, uh, morning, Ginge, uh, uh, from a sunny Wharton in Lancashire. Oh, they've got the sun in Lancashire. I'm so pleased to see that. Uh, Denise Tinzel is watching. Barbara Telfer is watching as well. I can't see any other big comments at the moment. So I'm, uh, and John Coop is watching as well. He's got a, 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 a store that sells records in Stamford. Uh, it does a market there if you want to look for Northern Soul tunes or any classic heavy rock or heavy metal tunes. That's the man to go check out John Cope uh, with his market stall in Stamford on uh, Saturdays. Anyway, nice to have you looking in, fella. Uh, right, that's it from me for today. Just to remind you, my Northern Soul show goes out uh, tonight at 5 p.m. UK time, which is 7 o'clock our time over here in Greece. Uh, this week's show is basically a playlist of tunes uh, from Wigan, from uh, Wiggy Win Stanley, his kind of tunes, the northern soul that he enjoys. I started putting that list together when I got word about his condition last week. Um, and again, um, I was really shocked at some of the great stuff that he said, Ginger, you got to play this. Ginger, you got to play that. Ginger, you got to play this. And uh, once again, Wiggy, we're thinking of you, mate. Fingers crossed. All's going to be well. Uh, that's it from me. I will uh, be with you tomorrow. I'll keep my ear to the ground. I'll see what transpires. And once again, have a lovely day. And if you're over here, just take care. It's very hot today. Make sure you hydrate yourself and get some of that sunscreen on you as well. And I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.